So you have cropped your photo and you're ready to resize it for social media. Here it is. Let's go to image, image size. And I'm going to go a little bit extreme right here. Let's go for 500 by 500 pixels. The resampling is automatic. However, whenever we resize, have a look at this. What about all of these grains and sparkles? Why is that happening? So today I'm going to share with you 10 tiny things we can do in Photoshop so that we don't ruin our social media posts. Also, make it so much better. So without any further ado, let's get started. The reason why it's happening is because of interpolation settings. The first thing you need to do is to go to Photoshop settings, Photoshop settings. On a Windows, it is under edit, preferences and then inside of general just go there or use the shortcut control or command k just make sure image interpolation is set to by cubic automatic for the most part if you want to set it to something else you already know about it but for the most part by cubic automatic does the job hit ok but that didn't take the sparkles way it just needs to re-render so let's press control or command t hit enter again and now it's fine and it's happening because we were dealing with smart objects and that is why when we went to image image size none of these resampling settings worked for us so for every time whether you're using smart objects or not you want to make sure your interpolation setting is set to by cubic automatic sometimes when you edit an image in another application and you bring that into photoshop the colors are just off maybe it's a screenshot you took in premiere pro you brought that in maybe it's something else you brought that in and the colors are off. Most of the times when this happens, it is usually due to the fact that the image was not assigned a color profile in the first place. Photoshop doesn't know what color box this falls into. And that is why it just makes a standard assumption that this image is in sRGB. By the way, how to know that this image was not assigned a color profile? Click on this arrow right there. Click on document profile. And as you can see, it's untagged RGB. This is not tagged. So let us assign a color profile. Go to edit assign profile right here and you need to remember what color profile you were working with in the previous device or software usually if you don't remember it is either let's go to profile it is either pro photo rgb which is the case for this one and the colors automatically improve so much or it is adobe rgb or maybe it is image p3 so either of these three or you can try other ones as well. If you set it to sRGB, it's going to go back to how it was. As you can see, this is the assumption that Photoshop made and therefore it is wrong. So let's set it to Pro Photo RGB, which it was and hit OK. There you go. Fantastic. But here's the problem. You can continue working with this. You can start applying adjustments, whatever you want to do. But when you upload it online, they recognize sRGB not pro photo rgb i recommend that you either already convert it to srgb and continue working on that by going to edit convert to profile right here and choose profile srgb from right here if there are multiple layers and you don't want to flatten them you want to make sure this is unchecked all right hit okay and now it is srgb if you don't want to do this you can also convert it to srgb on export which we will cover later, which if you don't do and it's pro photo RGB, let us try export, file, export, export as. See, the colors are absolutely different. The colors here is different. The colors here are different. So there's a little setting we need to set, which we will cover later. However, if you had already converted this to sRGB by going to edit, convert to profile and sRGB right here, hit OK. Then when you go to file, export, export as, have a look. Even when we have not set the setting, the colors are exactly the same. So watch the video till the end to pick what works for you. When you have added a lot of adjustments in Photoshop like I have right here, here's the before, here is the after. Sometimes there can be a little discrepancy on how Photoshop processes, calculates and displays your adjustments. And in some cases, it might be slightly different from the final export. Let me demonstrate that. Let's apply an extreme adjustment. So I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer and let's make the darks extremely dark something like this all right let's zoom out a little this is a preview thing keep that in mind now if i were to create a stamp visible layer at the top by pressing ctrl alt shift and e this creates a merged layer of everything you see on the canvas right now now have a look there is a difference here's the before here is the after it should be exactly the same right because it's a merged copy let me zoom in for you here is the before and here is the after why is it different Actually, it's not. It's a preview thing. As soon as we zoom in inside of Photoshop, not screen zoom, before, after, it's the exact same thing. Sometimes there can also be discrepancies here as well. But for the later versions of Photoshop, they're improving at a much faster rate. So 
just to be sure just to be on the safer side you want to lock in your adjustments whenever you have added all the adjustments you wanted to add all the filters you wanted to add at the last step create a merged layer at the top or a stamp visible layer by pressing ctrl alt shift and e with the topmost layer selected this will merge everything down onto one layer and then you export so that every adjustment is just as you see it across the board now this is big depending upon where you're posting and what you're posting you need to be mindful of where your content is inside the image have a look at this facebook page for adobe photoshop and have a look at this banner image that they have uploaded now this is looking fine everything is fantastic but as soon as we start to open this page on a narrower device maybe on a phone see the banner starts to cut off and let's make it even more narrower and right now this photoshop logo is covering the car so you need to upload your work in a way so that important stuff doesn't get covered let's take a look at this example this is a thumbnail that i designed for a previous video and you would notice that i placed the photoshop logo on the left not on the right there is a reason for that let's say we placed the photoshop logo on the right no problem with that we can make it smaller this is looking fine as well however there's a problem with that if you look at youtube sometimes it displays the thumbnail in a very small area and on the bottom right there is this duration which shows up and that would cover the photoshop logo and it would look odd so we need to be mindful of which areas are likely to be cut off or covered and these things are always changing so i recommend that you do your research according to the platform that you're working with now this photo is looking fantastic like this grandpa's rocking there's a lot of contrast pop but is that enough now usually when we upload on instagram these days it has a dark background sometimes some social media platforms have a white background youtube right now has a white background and things keep changing depending upon the website or the platform that you're uploading in you want to make sure that your image has enough contrast this looks good right now but imagine how it would look with a white background would that be enough now the way to check it is right click outside the canvas not inside the canvas outside the canvas and you want to choose a custom color of course you have black and all of those options right here select custom color and by default it would be some weird blue color set it to white absolutely white for now hit okay now whenever you choose custom it would be white this is default right click on it this is custom which is white now when you zoom out i recommend always zooming out small so that it also looks good on a phone the contrast is not enough so click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose our favorite curves take the slider on the right to the left you can also hold the alt key or the option key and then when you move the slider you can notice which areas are losing details at what point so i'm going to stop about right here the contrast is pretty good and there you go here's the before here's the after adds that extra punch absolutely needed now after you have done your adjustments you can check it both on a black background and then a white background and see if it looks good on both if it looks good great to go if this is going to be in an art gallery and the color of the background wall is something you can also test with that lots of opportunities you just want to make sure that you test it with the background that it's going to be in when we are looking at stuff on our phone most people outside of the photography design and video industry it's hard for them to appreciate the intricacies of muted colors or desaturated colors sometimes it helps to have a little bit of punch not always but most times so this photo looks good on its own both on black and white background by the way this is the fake egypt in las vegas anyway just a little bit of color boost can go a long way you can use your favorite technique i'm just going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer and just boost the saturation a bit and it does go a long way here is the before and here is the after such a nice one isn't it you can also add vibrance if that works for you click on the adjustment layer icon and choose vibrance from right here and also increase that that is up to you so 100 looks not bad maybe we're going to go 90 all right there you go so here's the before and here is the after so try just a bit of color boost we're going to be looking at it at a very small screen also there are so many advanced ways of enhancing colors which we have discussed in videos like this when you're ready to process your final photo for social media after you've done everything the first thing that you should set is the dimension i recommend starting with the dimension that the platform recommends for example instagram recommends 1080p 
width and recommends aspect ratio between 1.91 is to 1 and 4 is to 5. So for my image, I'm just going to go with square with 1080p by 1080p. From platform to platform, this changes and I highly recommend that you look at the official website of the platform. This is the official Instagram. This is the official Facebook with a lot of that data. Now, once you have figured that out, set that inside of Photoshop. We want it to be square. It is already square. Just to be sure, press C for the crop tool. And right here, you can choose the aspect ratio. We're going to go with square. This is fine. Hit enter or return. Now we want to set the dimensions. Let's go to image, image size. We want it to be 1080 pixels wide. So let's set the width to 1080. You want to make sure it's pixels, not inches or something else. And then you want to check resampling. Also, you want to check this. Otherwise, aspect ratios won't be maintained. So make sure this is checked. And then you type in 1080. Resampling automatic is fine. And then just hit OK. Press Ctrl or Command 0 to fit the canvas to the screen. Now, let's not forget to check it with a white background as well. Let's zoom out. Right click outside of the canvas. Choose white background because you never know. Maybe Instagram changes it in the future. Maybe you want to post somewhere else too. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves and hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click on this slider, take it to the left. At this point, we're absolutely losing details. So we will steer clear and go to that point. There you go. So here is the before and here is the after. Again, I recommend zooming out and then taking a look. Here's the before, here's the after. When we look at photos from popular photographers on Instagram, we often ask ourselves, how are their photos so sharp? Here is the secret. Part of it is lighting, to be honest, but I highly do recommend that you do some level of sharpening for social media. First of all, with the topmost layer selected, press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E to create a stamp visible layer at the top. Keep in mind, there are several ways to sharpen. You can use your favorite method. Here, we're going to use high pass. Let's press Ctrl, Shift, U, Command, Shift, U to desaturate first and then go to filter, Convert for Smart Filters. Hit OK so that we can change the values later. Let's go to Filter, Other, High Pass. Now here's an interesting thing. I recommend zooming out first to the size of your phone. Decrease the radius and slowly and gradually increase it and stop at the point where you begin to see all of those lines and not the halos. If you increase it too much, you'll start to see the halos. So let's keep on increasing it. And I'm going to stop right about maybe 2.8. I'm going a bit heavy handed so you can see the difference. Hit OK. Now change the blend mode from normal to overlay. And there you go. Have a look at the wonderful sharpness. So here is the before and here is the after. Now we don't want the sharpness all over the place. We only want it in certain areas. So with the layer selected, hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask button to create a negative mask. Then take the brush with a soft round brush, opacity and flow at 100, just dab on areas where you want it with white. So we want it around the eyes, maybe a little bit on the nose, maybe on the lips and a little bit on the chin. There you go. It looks so good. It's like 3D sharpening. So here is the before and here's the after. Just the right amount of sharpening around the eyes and the lips. Now we need to learn the right way to export it. Also, if the color space is something else other than sRGB, you can change it at this step as well. First of all, let's press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E to lock in all of the adjustments that we have done. Remember our previous recommendation? This is not always necessary, but I always do it as a good practice. Let's go to File, Export and Export As. Some people like to use Save for Web. You can use that as well. Export As. And right here, default quality is fine. Sometimes if the quality is too high, Instagram or social media platforms try to compress it. So you want to make sure quality is sufficient. Right here at quality six, we need to zoom in and check if everything is right. Now, not so much. Everything is mostly all right. If it's not, you can try increasing the quality only then. This is fine. And also to make sure that the colors are consistent or if there was some other color space right here. In any case, I recommend scrolling down and making sure convert to sRGB is checked and embed color profile is also checked so that the color mismatch issue doesn't happen. In this image, we are not doing any kind of resizing. We have already resized it. But if you are resizing from right here, resampling, make sure it is set to bicubic automatic. 
The rest, everything is fine. Depending upon the platform and the image, you can choose JPEG or PNG. For regular photos, PNGs are bigger files than JPEGs because PNGs are lossless. JPEGs are lossy, which means JPEGs do lose some amount of quality, but that is very negligible as long as the quality is high. PNGs do not lose any quality. However, you need to play with your platform to see whether it nicely treats PNGs or not. If it does, you can use PNG. Otherwise, JPEG is easily the most easily supported file format and you can always go with that. Hit export and save it wherever you want. So that's all the little things and settings you can set to make sure that your photos on social look fantastic. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and incredible people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and making videos like this possible. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.